contact us online. Okay guys, welcome to tonight's video, which is a rules basics tutorial on flags and eagles. Uh, at this point it's important to point out that flags and eagles is based upon the very popular rebels and patriot system from Osprey Games. Uh, while we take you through the rules tonight, we have made small tinkers to the rules based on play tests and research around how things might have fought slightly differently in the Napoleonic era. We will make that clear as we go through playing the turns. Um, but in, in general principle, we have stuck to the core rules set out by Leck and Mersey from Osprey Games uh, and tried to sort of interject as, as little as possible in those. I'm joined tonight by Ian, Andy and Adam. Hi you guys. Hello. Hello. Uh, and the, these are my fellow, fellow generals. So we are going to be playing really a sample few turns of Flags and Eagles just to give the guys out there that are keen to get involved in our online games a real basic idea of how easy it is to pick this system up and play. And more importantly, for you guys to get involved and play online with us, which is exactly what we want. So uh, I'm going to introduce uh, the forces that we're using tonight. We have chosen the spread of units based on units that cover basically every rule that is within the, the system. So I'm going to highlight on the screen. So we have a shot cavalry unit, the 6th Inniskilling Dragoons, who are heavy cavalry. Ooh. We have a standard British line unit, 12-man British line unit. In principle, guys, most units in Flags and Eagles slash Rebels and Patriots will have a standard size of 12 men. Small units are 6 men, and large units are 18 men. So it's all based off that sort of principle around 6, 12, 18. Really, really simple to remember. And then we have a small themed unit, the 95th Rifles, on the British side. For the French, we have a 12-man light infantry unit. We have... An artillery piece, which is a nine pound cannon, and we have six light cavalry. So that, that really represents, I suppose, the entire spread of units within the game uh, or there or thereabouts. And it's just to give you guys an idea of how each of these units might play and how you might command them when you're playing. So, without further ado, one of the rules additions that we made after extensive play test for a multiplayer game was the concept of drawing chips from a bag. Quite popular in a lot of other systems, and we thought it fit it really well with the mechanics of the game. So, for those of you wishing to play a multiplayer battle, you will have your name on a chip or a token in the bag. So there will be one for myself and Ian, who will be commanding the British forces tonight, and there will be a chip or a token for Andy and Adam, who are commanding the French. When your chit is drawn from the bag, it is your turn to try and activate units. Now, the standard single player game of Rebels and Patriots, you get a chance to activate every unit. You get a chance to act with everything in your force without any sort of risk inherent in your turn. However, with the multiplayer, if you fail an activation, which you will get to see how it works very shortly, it actually turns into another draw of a chit from the bag. So your turn ends and somebody else gets to play. And that continues throughout the duration of the game. So I'm just going to blast on in, guys, and I'm going to draw the first chip of the bag and really get down to the nitty-gritty of showing the guys how the system works. So our first player up tonight will be Adam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Adam. All right. So Adam's actually in charge tonight on the French side of the light infantry and the Hussars. So, Adam, it's your first turn. What is the first unit you would like to try and do something with? The Hazars, please. Okay, the famed Hazars, the flashy Hazars, which are these guys. So, Adam, at this point, you have basic principle of the game is called an activation. An activation works by rolling two dice, 2d6, and you're looking for a target number of six at all times. So, the target number in this game is a flat six, always, never changes. There's modifiers to your dice roll, but the target number of six never changes. So it's really, really simple to remember, really, really easy um, to get a grip of. Adam, so what is it you fancy doing with your hazards at this point? Um, moving them up. Okay, to, you, you want to move them. That's fair enough. Yeah. So that's a standard activation. So what you're going to do is roll your two dice and you're looking for a six. However, if you notice in the gold on the screen, guys, that is the officer on the French side. What an officer does is, when he is within 12 inches of your unit, he will add plus one to that 2d6 roll, in effect, making it easier for the unit to activate as he barks orders. So, Adam, you're on 2d6 plus one. We're looking for a six. Got a seven. 
seven. There we go. Perfect. Total of seven. So you can move your light cavalry. Now, light cavalry are the fastest unit in the game, guys. They move a total of 12 inches across the board. So, Adam, 12 inch movement you've got. I just want to show on the screen. Where would you like to move them to? To run. To run about there. Well, okay, so you're literally as... sort of coming into the middle of the board, effectively. Yeah. Perfect. So there we go. Simple activation roll. Simple movement. Lovely. Okay, Adam, you now have a chance to activate your second unit. Yep, so be the light infantry then. Try to fit them. Again, that's a seven. A seven, and again, Adam, you'll notice that you are still within 12 inches of your officer, so you'll get plus one to that roll. Yep, so that'll be an eight. Yep, uh, and movement, guys, so light cavalry, 12 inches, light infantry, eight inches. Let's try and get them moved up a bit then. About so a bit there. So they're pretty much coming straight forward. Yep. Okay. okay, so with that, guys, in our multiplayer system of Flags and Eagles, Adam's had essentially the perfect turn because he did not fail an activation. If he had failed his activation roll, at that point, his turn would have ended and we would have drawn a new chip from the bag. I have reached the perfect turn, which means we are now on to drawing our next player. So, next out of the bag, we have Ian, Mr. Crew. Ian tonight, guys, is commanding the Inniskilling Dragoons and our Line Infantry. <coughs> okay. So Ian, what would you like to do first? I'm trying to judge some musket range onto those uh, uh, hussars in the centre from my line. Okay, so the reason Ian has touched on that, guys, is for the purposes of flags and eagles, we do not allow pre-measuring, and that is because we believe there's a level of risk inherent in taking a shot at anything. Unfortunately, commanders in the Napoleon on air Napoleonic era did not have a god's eye view of the battlefield and they did not have yardsticks to measure distance. So if Ian decides that he would like to shoot those hussars, he will roll his activation roll as normal. However, if it turns out he's out of range, <laughs> they've just wasted their musket balls. So up to you, Ian. Let's try it. Let's what, check, uh, let's Ian, check. can you tell the guys on stream what is the range of a standard musket in the game? I think it's 18, isn't it? It's 18 inches, that's correct. So I've got, I'm trying to judge it. <laughs> I'll try it, I'll try it. Okay, so I I can, similar to Adam, you are within 12 inches of your pretty officer here, so you'll get plus one to this activation roll. Cool, loads, loads of activation. Let's hope I'm in range. Ah, there we go, so we are 12. So you've definitely activated, and I'm gonna give you, yeah, you're definitely getting a shot off there, Ian. Sweet. So, basics, rules, principles, guys. Before Ian rolls any more dice, he's managed to get shot off. Flags and Eagles works off a really, really basic principle, which is super easy to pick up. A standard unit fires 12 dice. Simple as that. Nothing more complicated than that. You will never need more than 12 dice for this game. So Ian's unit is at full strength, and he's just got shot off, so you get to roll 12 dice, Ian. The number that you need to actually hit and kill something in this is based on the unit's profile, which you can see in the core rulebook. Uh, and in this case, for British Line Infantry, we're looking for fives. Fives, I think. Fives, absolutely. Now, while it's fives to hit, Ian, just while you're racking your dice up, I'll explain to the guys. In order yeah. to kill a cavalry man, now this is one of the changes we've actually made to the core rules. In order to kill a cavalry man in this game, you need three hits. So he needs to roll at least three of those dice on a five up to kill one infantryman. The, the standard Rebels and Patriots rules is two. We change that to reflect the fact that it's really effectively two figures plus they're on a horse. So it's three standard. Now, back to this, the core rules themselves. Anything outside of half of your range 
actually adds one onto that hit the kill total. So if they're outside of half of 18, which is nine inches, you're actually going to need four hits of to kill one. Now, nine inches is there, so they are actually outside of, of half range. So you're looking at four, five ups to kill at least one guy. So over to you. Ah. Oh, not good. Sure. Nothing. Nothing. How many did you get to? Oh, I got. I was trying to show it. I'm trying to think of a way I lifted it. Doesn't look metal. Was there any? <laughs> We've got two, three. So, uh, Ian, the reason I've asked you to show that, very important rules, perception for people, is part hits don't count in this. So if you got three hits there, for example, when you get four, doesn't do anything. Wasted. It. It's just bounced off. So if you took your shot and unfortunately hasn't done anything to the Hazars. However, it's now a chance for you to activate your second unit, which is your Inniskilling Dragoons, the heavy cavalry, heavy British cav. Right. Well, we know they're in range of a charge. Because we've just had a shot with the line. Absolutely. Range of a charge for cavalry, guys. Again, very basic principles in the game. Cavalry can declare a charge if you think they're within 18 inches. Infantry can declare a charge if they, you think they are within 12 inches. So again, really, really basic principles. So, Ian, you're going to try and charge with the cav. So that's 2d6 plus 6. Yep. Yep. And you're adding again plus one for your officer because he is within range. Here we go. Okay. So five, six, seven, eight plus six, ten, one. Ten. Uh, so guys, I suppose that to break that down, the reason he, Ian has rolled his normal activation roll of two d six, he's added plus That's one right. for his officer. Yep, there we go. So we've got an eight plus is one for his officer as a nine. The reason he's added six to that activation roll is. Cavalry are notoriously good at charging for obvious reasons. They're on horses. So they actually get to add plus six to their charge activation roll, which also ha happens to dictate the distance they move. So there's no set distance for charges in this. The charge is based off your dice roll, which adds yeah. again that real fun element of risk. So like cavalry, guys, Adam, this is your unit. So one of the rules principles yeah. within Rebels and Periods slash Flags and Eagles is that some units have special rules which let them do pretty funky things. Light Cavalry have the ability to do something called evade because they're light, they're nippy, they're sharp, and they're fast. It's on their sort of core profile. So Adam, at this point, before Ian moves or does anything, you get a chance to react. Now, with evade, what you can do is you can make a half move and shoot or you can shoot and then make a half move. Or counter-attack, I think. Uh, they don't actually have, so they're not... Standard uh, lights don't have the counter-attack, I believe. I think they do. Check. No, they don't. Could well do. Mixing no. myself up. These are just standard lights. No, they, they, they don't have to be aggressive. Oh, actually they can. So standard light cavalry can actually evade or counter-attack. Counter-attack yeah. means they will actually charge back at you. So, Bring Adam, it on! <laughs> what would you like to do? Don't bring it on. You'll get shanked. <laughs> Run away and shoot me. I was thinking that as well, to be honest, because no, they're light. light. You're shooting the five, so you can run away. Yeah. May as well just move and shoot. Okay, which one would you like? Which one would you like to do first? Move, please. Okay. So, in order to react, it's a standard activation rule, guys. So it's an out of turn activation rule. So Adam needs once again his two d six rule, standard rule to activate. He is outside of range of his officer, so it's just a two d six rule, and he's still again looking for that basic rule of six. Oh yeah. Nine. Nine. Okay, so which way would you like to move, Adam? Um, towards the 95th to the bottom. Okay, so you're going to move this way. So when you evade, guys, it's actually a half move, so you don't get your full movement. Light cavalry, as we mentioned earlier, move 12 inches, so they get to move 6 inches 
this way. Okay, Adam, and you're looking to get a shot off. Now, the range of light cavalry with their carbines is 12 inches. So, I'm going to measure that for you. And you are just in range. When you're measuring range in Rebels and Patriots, guys, you only need to range from one model to another model in the unit. Okay, so it's, again, although it's... Uh, it doesn't really be, it's more about heroic combat and heroic shooting as opposed to the nitty gritty of how many people are within range because while we're seeing models static on the table, in real life they'd actually be moving and quite fluid. So Adam, you can fire, now you're only shooting on half dice, which means that you are shooting on six dice at this point. So you're rolling six instead of the 12 dice. Yep. And you are looking forward Let's have a look, or let tell us what you tell us what you've rolled. Should I say? <laughs> <laughs> I'll pop them all in. <laughs> For the giggles, I've got a six, two ones, a five, a four, and a three. Okay, so with a shoot value of uh, five for the light cavalry, you've actually got two hits. However. Cavalrymen, if you remember, are three hits to kill, plus you're outside of half range, which adds another one, so you wouldn't need it four to do any sort of damage. However, you have managed to move. Ian, what was your total charge distance now, if we revert back to that? That's right, we haven't forgot that one. <laughs> there, you had an eight plus your one, which was nine plus six, so you have a 15-inch charge range. To give you an idea, so guys... This is just how deadly cavalry can be. So you are going to get the charge in, regardless of the evade. Still coming. So you still manage to wing him. And again, guys, combat works exactly the same as shooting. General rules principle is if one model can reach, then the whole unit gets to fight effectively because while we've moved the models the way we have, they are much more fluid in real life. So the Union Cavalry have popped off a charge, which takes us into combat. Combat is fought simultaneously. In this case, the Union Cavalry Brigade have a variety of special rules that makes them quite strong in combat. So they will fight on 12 dice. Again, similar to shooting, the basic precept of combat is 12 dice. They will fight on 12 dice. Now, the Light Cavalry, however, are only a six-man unit. So they're a small unit, which means without any upgrades, oh, which we'll get to in a little bit, they only on six dice. So the simultaneous roll will be Ian rolling 12 dice and Adam rolling six dice in this combat. However, Adam's rolls will be based on the unit's profile, which is a basic hit roll of six. So he needs six to do uh, to score a hit. However, Ian has just charged. So heavy cavalry, heavy shot cavalry usually fight on a five up. They have charged, which gives them plus one to that roll. So they're now hitting on a four up. They are also aggressive, which is an upgrade that units can take in the game, which gives them a further plus one. So they're now actually hitting on three up. So Ian's rolling 12 dice looking for three up. Adam is rolling six dice, looking for six ups. Cavalry fighting cavalry, guys. This is the one uh, bit where we refer back to the core rules. You only need two hits to kill. So a cavalryman fighting a cavalryman is effectively fair odds at this point. Both pretty deadly. So guys, without any further ado, if you want to roll your dice. Oh, I'll just say that if Adam had elected to counter charge, he would have also got a plus one, but he did He would have, that's correct. So a counter charge gives you the same bonuses as a charge, which is a flat plus one to your hit ball. So it can often be good to counter charge. It can. Right, are we ready? Right. Two, 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 three. I've killed three of him. Two. So you've got a total of six hits, any or six or seven. Ah, cool. So six hits. 
Guys, you just have to kill three. Two hits. Uh, you got two hits, which will kill one, Adam. Yep. So, guys, simple, <laughs> simple concept in combat. How is a combat decided? The basic principle is the person that scores the most kills wins the combat. So, in this case, Ian, you've killed three. Adam's killed one, so Ian has won the combat. What happens at that point, guys, is what's called a retreat. And a retreat is a half move. Backwards, away from the trouble. So, light cavalry, 12-inch movement, means they retreat six inches. Now, usually at, usually at this point, you would take a morale check based on the fact that units have taken casualties to see whether you stay in the game or if you run off. But, once again, the Union Cavalry have a special rule called follow-up, which all shock cavalry get in the game, which means they're so battle-crazed and ready for war that they can actually now elect to try and follow up. So, Ian, would you like to try and follow up? Yes, let's follow up. Okay, so a follow-up is a half move, which is five yeah. inches in this case, which still gets you within an inch of the models. And you get to fight again, guys. No plus one for me now, though. I've lost my impetus of the charge. So I'm just plus on the fives. The Ugh. 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 Only one more killed. Okay, so enough hits to kill one guy. Absolutely not at all. <laughs> Nothing? Okay, Adam. <laughs> so, there we go. Brilliant. So Ian's managed to kill one, Adam has killed zero. Now, at this stage is when we will now look at the effects of the morale of that combat. Same applies to <laughs> shooting, but we'll get to that shortly. So, Adam now has under half strength in his unit. So we start out with six guys, he's now only got two. When a unit goes below half strength, they become what's called disordered. So there is a simple methodology for morale in this game system. The first step of morale is disordered. The second step is broken. And the third step is when you route and run off the battlefield. So Adam straight away from the sheer fact that he's got lost so many minutes of his unit, his original starting unit, he gets a point of disorder, which I'll just mark with a bit of cotton wool for now. However, you can use any suitable token that you have, or dice, or anything you want. So they're, they're immediately disordered, which makes them less effective, as we'll see, as the game goes on. However, the guys now have to make a morale check. Anybody that has taken the casualty has to take a morale check. So Ian, you'll have a check, as well as Adam. Right. The morale check is a simple activation roll again. So two dice are rolled. What's the modifiers? You take away the number of casualties you have taken. Ian, in this case, you've taken one, so you're minus one. In Adam's mm -hmm. case, he's minus four. If you're close enough to your officer, he, however, will add his usual bonus of plus one. In this case, both units are within range of their commander, so they get to offset sort of one point of that. So Ian, yours is a straight 2d6 roll. Adam, you'll be minus three on your roll. So, if you give me your morale rolls, guys. I've got a disorder. So, Ian has rolled a five, and Adam has rolled a nine. So, we'll start with Ian. Ian has rolled a five, uh, just a flat roll. That's under six, which means he has actually taken a point of disorder as well. And Adam? You rolled a total of? Nine. Nine minus three overall gives you six. So you actually managed to stay just by the nip of the bud uh, in a position where you haven't actually ran off the board. Guys, with morale rolls, it's a simple uh, precept of you're looking for over six to not be affected. If you're under six but above two, you will take a point of disorder. If you're under the two marks, so if you're all one or less with all those modifiers, you're actually broken at that point. You take two of those markers, which means it starts to mean you start to retreat, etc. But we'll, again, we will get to that. Ian again, once again, won the combat. So these guys have to back out of the road. Six inches. 
That's one of the bad things about, well, not the bad things. One of the good things about this game is getting disorder markers on stuff. Because even though my calves look pretty and there's loads of them, they now fight on half dice. Absolutely. So effectively, guys, I suppose that's a real good point to interject, Ian. Thanks for bringing it up. When you're disordered, you fight on six dice instead of 12. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the rules we made from the core system uh, for the purposes of Flags and Eagles is that you can never fight on less than six dice. So, for example, really good point to bring it up. Adam's light cavalry fight on six dice because they're not modified in any way to be better at fighting. If they are disordered like they are now, they don't fight on three dice. They still fight on six dice. You can't ever go lower than six dice. However, disorder also makes it harder for you to activate because it imposes a minus one penalty on your activation rolls. Similarly, broken would be a minus two on your activation rolls and then right it is where you clear off the board so there we go Ian that is your calf and your le uh, Lang infantry have actually fought now so it's over to that's the end of your turn effectively your units have fought again a perfect round we managed to activate all done and that brings us to Andy Fraser the French artillery commander oh, oh that, was, that was the whole thing um, not only the French artillery commander but the commander of this whole side of the board and watch Adam, my my young lieutenant, run off and block my <laughs> and go, make a mess of everything. Now we have to try and sort this out again. <laughs> and we've got oh god, just about good grief. A, a sec What are you trying to do? Oh. Who are you shooting and stuff? Oh well yeah oh, oh, that's the whole thing. Have to decide. Uh, I've got to shoot. I can't do anything other than shoot. I can move, of course, but uh, this is a, the heaviest of heavy guns, so it doesn't actually have a movement written. It just has to sit. Um, if I want to move, that means I can rotate up to 45 degrees. That's right. Or, or up to 90 degrees. Um, maybe it's a, it's a rotation. Guys, if you're playing the game, put your guns in the right place. Don't ever have to have to make them rotate. Uh, okay, so at this point, I'm going to shoot. Um, there's only one thing left to shoot, and that's that horrible unit of uh, horse. Right, you can do nothing else. And on a, a six, which is which would normally be enough, but it's a seven because my guy's there. Your officer's there. And Andy, yeah, real good point. Because Andy's actually firing heavy artillery, uh, artillery in the game, heavy artillery in per particular can actually ignore target priority. So again, a basic rules precept is when you're shooting at a unit, you have to actually fire at the closest unit unless there is another unit that is either yeah. equidistant um, or slightly further away that's easier to hit. Yeah. So in this case, Andy could actually elect to shoot any unit on the board that he can see. However, mm -hmm. he's opting for the obvious threat, which is the heavy calf. Yeah, but at this point, we want them to, to put canister shot in and try and try and wipe them out. So yeah, absolutely. So Andy, uh, you have got your activation roll. Artillery yeah. fire twelve dice, which is where they're oh, particularly right. potent, and they're looking for a four up to hit. You are within half range, so you only need that three hits to kill that we need sort of standard for cavalry. Oh, oh hang on, hang on. Uh, Force me on the one, two, three. Four, five, six, well, seven we got, so uh, six good ones. Enough to wipe, enough to kill two cavalry, sorry, three cavalrymen, you got six, did you say? Yeah. Yep, yeah, so enough to, sorry, six is enough to kill two cavalrymen. Guys, when you remove casualties, you have to remove the closest to the firing slash fighting unit, so in this case it will be these two young guys here and again guys firing works exactly the same as melee in that Ian is now forced to take a morale check because he has taken casualties so Ian the rule is you're now 2d6 however you're disordered which will be minus one in that roll mm -hmm. you are within range of your officer which is a plus mm -hmm. one so that sort of offsets that but you've lost two guys so that's minus two on this roll not good another disorder what have you rolled? 
So Ian's rolled a six minus two is four. So it's still above the two mark, which is good. However, he's taken an order soccer marker, which means he is now broken and must immediately retreat a half move. Ian, which direction would you like to go? <laughs> Away from the dastardly gun. Away from the gun. Okay, so five inch retreat, guys. Thank you. The smell of the powder has forced you off again. Eng English swine, roast beef. English swine. Ah, oh, these are Irish. These are Irish horses, mind. They are Irish. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you find them on the wrong side. That's the end of your turn, Ollie, which just leaves myself then to activate. Oh, sorry, I've blocked you. It's okay. Uh, so what I'm going to elect to do, I am going to try and move at this point. Uh, so my 2d6 roll, I am within range of my officer. He's right beside me. So I'm going to try and move the 95th Rifles. Hmm. In fact, the 95th Rifles, quite interestingly, um, are sharpshooters, which is an upgrade in the game. So they have a 24-inch range, which is actually making me quite tempted to take a pot shot at these guys. Oh, chance it. Infantry. So I think I'm actually going to like to do that. So my officers are going to order them to do that. And I have rolled a six and a four, which is 10 plus one for my officers. They're definitely getting their shot off. Now, we mentioned earlier, guys, that small units only fight and fire on six dice. However, because they have taken the sharpshooter upgrade, and this is one of our rules tinkers, Certain upgrades in the game allow you to fire or fight at full effectiveness. In this case, that equates to firing with 12 dice. So am I in range? And again, it's only one model to one model. Absolutely, I've got perfect range to these guys. The light infant right, so I'm going to fire my 12 dice. So, unlike, cav unlike cavalry, which we have seen, <laughs> uh, it only takes two hits to kill uh, a, a guy on foot. I am outside of half range, which will add a further one on that. So that's three hits to kill. However, I am a sharpshooter, so I am looking for. Okay, so I'm looking for four ups. So I have one, two, three, four. By six. So that equates to two dead light influence. Again, the closest mons become the targets. So whoever commands the light infantry, you are now going to be forced to take a morale check. Modifiers, guys, if you've picked it up already, I'm sure you have, are minus two. And plus one for the officer, so minus one overall. Five and a three. Five and three, see it. Minus one overall, it uh, means you're fine, Adam. So you haven't actually yeah. taken enough damage to the sorter yourself. So, guys, that is all four draws of the tokens in a turn, which then resets itself to another turn so turn two now at this stage guys as you'll see as the weeks and months goes on with the project and the rules some circumstances there'll now be uh, honor and victory points scored based on what's happened in that turn and that all revolves around the objective of the mission or the narrative of the mission and um, so you could actually score points that help you to win the game overall at this point for the purposes of this game tonight we haven't actually delved into that but we will go into that at a later point so, turn two, the chips go back in the bag, and we redraw our next commander, which is Andy. Oh, oh no! My horses! <laughs> <laughs> well, one more time. Uh, one more time, load into the breach. Other well, one. at this point, I mean, uh, if we're thinking about it, of course, the... Uh, These guys are quite a bit away. These dudes aren't that badly done. Uh, the, the light infantry aren't that badly affected. They could have a go at the, the line, so it has to be this line we're going to have to do. So. Okay, so Andy, you are looking for an activation rule? 
Hopefully, guys, you've picked up the basic now. We're looking for a six, and the officer adds plus one because he's within 12 inches. Simple stuff. Not, not even in 12 inches. He's an artillery man. He's he is. It's, it's actually the, the famed Pink Panther, painted by Mr. Crew. He's, oh. he's in a garish pink uniform. <laughs> That is, that is a beautiful 11. 11, okay. So that's a that's a definite yes. Now, guys, um, heavy artillery are quite potent in bigger games on bigger boards because they have an astounding range of... 48 inches. <laughs> 48 inches, absolutely. So, and I'm just going to measure for you. You're actually 23 inches away, which means you are within half range. So you only need two hits on your 12 dice here to kill the dude and you're hitting on four seven. ups seven so you've rolled seven which is enough to kill three guys Ian closest guys there we Ooh. go the, the, the poor British flag has just been shot off the board oh no and Ian that that be you and so a morale check my friend at minus three for your casualties but plus one for your officer there we go. Minus two. Over. Love it. They love it this time. Ah, they're perfect. Yeah, absolutely. They're fine. So the, the beat of the British drums has kept them in order, and they are fine. At this point, they're not disordered. But good shit, Andy. Andy has not failed the activation. One unit. I've only one. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's failed an activation yet, which is, uh, which is astounding. But, uh, but, but it happens. I mean, it's... Because of the random nature of activations, it just happens. So. It is. Mr. Cree? Watch this. Watch this. It'll be right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ian, right, I'll, have to, I'll, I'll have to try and take those disorders off of the, off of the calf. Yeah, perfect point to note is when you're broken, guys, so when you have taken two disorder markers, the only action you can take is to rally. So you, you're literally hightailing out of dodge. At that point, the only activation you can take is a rally. It's a standard activation on a six up. Again, plus one for being in range of the officer. So uh, over to you, Ian. Oof, just, just. Ah, so we go. six and a one is a seven. So when he makes a rally roll, guys, you remo remove all disorder slash broken tokens. So they all come off. So the guys have managed to swing around in the saddles and they're now back in the fight. However, they don't get the act any further this turn. So, um, Which leaves Ian's line infantry. I was yeah. desperately hoping they would run. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that leaves Ian's line. Again, highly yeah, different. they'll just come forward. I think, please, on a 10, just forward into the middle of the park. Uh, and because we haven't actually met, moved a standard line unit, which is the basis of all forces in the game, they move six inches. Ian, guys, just uh, I suppose to pick up a basic rules precept is you pick one model in the unit and you move it. In this case, it was the banner bearer, just because it's easy to see for me. When I've moved him, I move everything else in the unit loosely within four inches of that model. It can't move any further than six inches, so no Superman moves across the board, and also it can't go any further than him. So, for example, I can't bring this guy away out here. So again, really basic rule, which covers most situations. So they've moved, and that's the end of Ian's turn. Thank you. Your, 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 your colonel has to move as well, though, because he's... Yes, so apologies. Yes, so an officer, guys, I suppose, that Andy has now touched on that. An officer is attached to a unit uh, for the basics of the rules. Again, we'll, we'll dig down into that a little bit deeper in further weeks. But an officer stays loosely attached to the unit that he deploys with. So in this case, he was deployed with the line unit, so he stays with them. Really, he's a, I suppose, a token figure in a unit. Um, and it's just really there, I suppose, for narrative purposes, because he's dishing out that sort of additional to your activation rules. Uh, but again, we'll get into that in later weeks. For the, just for the basics, guys, to get you up and running, uh, th this is plenty. So next up, we have Adam. Right, so can I try to dodge the distance between that light infantry and the standard infantry? Um, 
Okay, so I suppose just to show you guys, Adam was looking at this unit and he's trying to gauge the distance to this unit. Guys, I think removing, one of the things we've done removing pre-measuring was to add a real element of risk and I think it's a brilliant part of the game uh, for Flags and Eagles because the commanders were forced to make decisions in battles and sometimes they didn't pay off, so... Okay, Adam, what would you like to do, my friend? Um, they're going to shoot. Okay, they're going to shoot. They're going to shoot. Right. So, we're looking at six up. You've got plus one from the officer. Nice. Got a nine. Nine plus one is ten. So, absolutely, you're going to get to shoot. Are you in range? 18 inches for muskets. Absolutely. However, you're outside a half range, Adam, which is here. So you're looking for the usual two to kill a guy plus one for being outside a half range. You're looking for three hits. Light infantry are hitting on, without any upgrades, a five up. So 12 five dice. Light infantry have first fire? Light infantry do not have first fire. Um, oh, the roll of dice sounds good on that table. Sounds amazing, does it? It's rolling on glass. <laughs> MDS. All right, we've got all the hits here. Five in total. Five hits. So we, you were looking for those that three. So three will kill one. And remember, we mentioned earlier that any sort of partial end of that number doesn't actually kill anything so you've managed to kill one guy still enough to force a morale check however that's good yeah, Doing so. it. Yeah. minus one plus one for your officer so it's just a standard 2d6 roll and it's a six so they're just by the skin of their teeth managing to hold their nerve uh, okay adam uh, your next unit up is your light cavalry now, yeah, well, unlike Ian, shot cavalry, when you're disordered, disordered again, guys, means one token. You can still act as normal. However, you are slightly inhibited, as we mentioned. You fight on you six dice. Yep, yeah, plus your minus one to your activation rolls. So it's up to you. Adam, you can still actually act at this point. So you're not forced to rally, which happens when you have two disorder tokens and are broken. So you've got the choice. I suppose the choice is in your hands at that point. But, but you have a plus one from, from me. Yeah, yeah, it'll be close enough to the Pink Panther. To neutralize the fact that Le, Le General de Pink Panther. <laughs> mm. The thing is, if we really don't want to move them, move them at this point, because they're still, even if we do move them up and charge them, they're still going to be. Still only on my, minus dice, and uh, there's, there's, they can't do much. They can't charge. They're better rallying. Yeah, I've just got to rally them, to be honest. That's what I was thinking, really. Wait until more has been softened up. Yeah, I'll rally them. There's another shot, shot coming before uh, anybody can do anything else. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nine. Nine, okay. So what's your action, Adam? Just going just to rally them. Yeah, just going to rally them. So the again, you leave all tokens. In this case, it's just one. So again, yeah, no yeah. rallied. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do much else this turn because they've used their action. Uh, and that then marks the end of Adam's turn. Which brings us, of course, to, last but not least, myself. So with the 95th, I'm now in a position where I have been sort of cornered in <laughs> down here. So I am going to actually move myself, I think, into a more, slightly more advantageous position and line myself up for a bit of future shooting. So I'm close enough to the officer. I get plus one to my activation roll. And I roll a six, plus one is seven. And because they're light, they get to move eight inches. So I'm actually going to come across this way. I'm going to pick my lead figure. And I'm going to slide out round the edge of my line unit, i.e. hide behind Ian. 
<laughs> and that marks the end of my turn. Which then begins the start of turn three. For the purpose of the demonstration, guys, this is going to be our last turn because we've covered pretty much all of the core rules pretty quickly there in the last half an hour. So back into the bag we go, and we're going into turn three, which will be our last turn for the evening. So first up, we have Adam. Back to you, my friend. Don't block me off, Adam. What? Don't block me off. Um, I'm going to try and shoot again with the light infantry onto the line. Okay, perfect. So again, for the guys watching, these are the lights and they're going to try and fire into the line. So six and a nine, six and a four, sorry. So ten. Six and a four is ten, which will get you your shot off. Yep. You are exactly the same distance as last time, Adam, so it's the same I principle, two hits to kill, plus an extra hit to kill because you're more than half range. But you're still firing twelve dice because your unit is still pretty healthy. Ah, that sound. <laughs> I need one of them boards. <laughs> Ouch. Um, do this time. Three. So enough to kill one guy. Closest model. So Ian, although it's only one kill, he's still forced an active or a, a morale check. At minus one, plus one for the officer. So just a straight 2d6 roll for you, Ian. Uh, this is the unit we're just talking about, unit in question. Ian? Hello? Okay, not sure. I think we've had a bit of a connection issue with Ian, mm -hmm. so I am just going to... Take the roll for him. Yep. Just until he reconnects there. So two D straight two D six roll, which is a four. So it's below six but above two. So I do actually take the sword or something. On my line infantry. Not quite sure what has happened there. Uh, so e that's your first shot, Adam. So your next activation is your as ours. As ours. Probably. So, and the other guys are disordered. So, that's uh -huh. a close. Uh, yep, they are now back to full strength, Adam. And I'm just going to, uh, guys, guys, apologies, but we have just managed to lose one of our players. The joys of technology. So, we're just going to get him back in while we continue with the turn. So Adam, has ours then? See if I move. Can I charge afterwards, or is no. charge? No, you get to charge. So if you think you're within eighteen inches, Adam, you can attempt to charge because you're cavalry. Remember, so you have to just make the call. Similar to shooting, you need to actually make that decision. Yeah, they can. Yeah, I'm going to charge the light, the standard infantry. And as well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The The only caveat is, Adam, if you make a charge roll and it's not far enough, you still have to move it. So you can end up firing yourself into the, the line of the muskets. So that's one of the caveats, guys, with the, and that's from the core rules. That's from the basic um, Rebels and Patriots rules. If you decide to charge and you fail it, you still got to move. But then again, this is the last turn that we're playing and this these are his ours. So time to go help our nether. Put the foot to the put the, put the, put the horse and do it. Seven. Seven. So I've got nearby, that's going to make it an eight. So that's an eight with your officer. However, because they're cavalry, yeah. remember they get the plus six. So that is a fourteen-inch charge. Oh, that's a that's a, that's a mean charge, mate. Oof. However, Adam, you have just fallen short. 
of the oh, leg. Oh, you know, him. She's going for the, uh, the, the other horse, the, the disordered horse for the gun, yeah? And, uh, I think you. I think you've. I think you've just. I think you've just ridden into hell there. <laughs> <laughs> they're bizarre. They're meant to ride into hell, though. So, next up, we have. I think Adam, you're praying that it's not uh, Ian <laughs> gets his token out here, and it's not. It's Andy, so he could actually help. Hi, <laughs> <out here. laughs> hi. Well, then that that has to be. Then I was I was going to shoot at the. Uh, the big already disordered horse, but uh, it seems to be that you're gonna have to shoot there across. So okay, all right, gonna have that. Gonna have to help Adam. So two. Of okay, Andy. So uh, yeah, make your activation roll first and foremost. Yeah, two of these, these bad boys, and we've got a double four. So a double four for the. The camera. Before, okay, you get plus one for your officers and nine, so you're getting your shot off. Um, hey, Miranda, you are. So, a little bit of rules interaction here, guys, which is why it's, it's really handy if you get yourself a copy of the rules uh, online, either via Osprey or Amazon. Try and pick yourself up a copy. They go for less than a tenner generally. So, really, really cheap system to, to buy into, and it's, it's well worth the value. But, little bit of rules interaction here, because Andy is firing across a unit, <laughs> his own unit, mind you, which is, I have to say, is particularly French. Um, so, shoot across his own unit within that arc of fire. These guys, this line in front of the unit, would get cover. However, because it's heavy artillery, they sort of degrade that cover because it's an artillery piece. So, they treat light cover as open ground, effectively. So, he's firing... Really, twelve really, dice. Really, you wanted to shoot these guys instead because I hate the ninety for rifles. Because all French generals should hate the ninety for rifles all the time, always kill them. <laughs> Swandy, so you've got range again. If if this had been any other unit, Andy would have had to fire at yeah. the cavalry because they're the closest. But because he's heavy artillery, he gets the choice. Well, you've got 12 dice. We're looking for fours. Yeah, I got, uh, I got 10. So you've got 10 four-ups. Now, usually you need two hits to kill someone. Because you are within half range, it remains that two. So you're actually wiping out five guys. Three, four, and five. Now, boom, before, boom. Ian, before Ian gets to actually roll his morale here, so at this point, immediately what happens, guys, as soon as you're below half strings, strength, which they now are, you take a disorder marker. So ah. now they now have two. Before he rolls anything further, because they are broken, they have to retreat a half move, which will be three inches, along with their officer. And now Ian gets to roll his morale at minus five, plus one for the officer, so minus four overall. No, they're gone. What's your total, Ian? Ah, so we're at six minus four is two, which is still above the two, but it does give them a third disorder marker. And a third disorder marker in this game means cheery by. Cheerio! And because the officer has now hightailed it out of dodge, naturally the rest of the force thinks, what the hell's going on? And they have to make a one once per game check, morale check, Immediately, so Ian, do you want to roll for your cavalry now? Because I've just seen their officer shit his brakes and run. They've also shot it, so they've rolled a three, so they straight away get a disorder. <laughs> and I'll roll for the 95th, who get a six, so they're actually all right. <laughs> Okay. I'm wondering if those I'm wondering if those in the skill are actually fighting on the right right side or wrong side. Has Andy been paying them off with some francs? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that is Andy, which then brings us to draw between myself and Ian, I believe. And that's Ian. Right, so I'm in no formation for the for the inner skill and dragoons at the bottom. However, I have disordered, so I'm fighting on six dice, but I'm going to try and charge the hussars and get some bit of honour. Okay, so it's just a 2d6 roll now at minus one because of the disorder. 
You've no officer about, so it's that minus one is your flat bonus. Three minus one is two, which means the dragoons are particularly confused and they don't actually do anything. Now, they don't perfect, activate. Perfect time to interject. Oh, but, uh, but you can get counter charged still by uh, the uh, by Mr. Purvis and his. Uh, you can only counter charge on a successful yeah. charge. I didn't even activate them. That's oh, how rubbish no. they are. You can only oh. counter charge on a successful activation, guys. So if Ian had managed to activate at that point, then the Hazars could have counter charged. But unfortunately, they just haven't. They're standing about uh, dancing panic with their horses. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> uh, which leaves the end to tail off tonight's tutorial, guys, is myself. So, um, typical 95th style, I'm going to try and wipe out the rest of the Hazars because I'm 95th in it. That's exactly what they'd want to do. <laughs> they look very oh, garish. Yeah. They're wearing bright uniforms and we don't particularly like that. Oh, so. no! <laughs> we're going to fire our 12 dice. We are at half range, so we're looking for, again, cavalry. Base is three hits to kill. And I'm looking for four ups. Vive Four, five, six, which manages to kill both remaining as ours. <laughs> so guys, with that uh, in mind, that is actually the end of tonight's rules basic tutorial. We hope you've enjoyed. Just a quick rundown before we finish up and wrap up for the evening. In the next three weeks, we are hosting our online battles, which is a chance for you across the world to come and join us uh, and play among yourselves in a live full six by four foot battle in doubles games. So next week we have a recreation of the Battle of Place Noir, which is a Prussian attack, a, 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 a Muggle big Prussian attack against a small elite French force. The following week we will have a really, really, in my mind, amazing scenario, which is not the charge of the Scots Greys at Waterloo, but the retreat of the Scots Greys <laughs> and the Brigade at Waterloo which I'm really looking forward to. And then hopefully, all being well, the week after, we're actually going to have a recreation of La Haisante. So please do get yourselves involved. I actually believe we have several several guys involved in the coming weeks. We've got Richie Hall, who's a big guy in the Napoleonic scene. And we've actually got somebody joining us from Australia next week as well. So he's actually tuning in at breakfast time for some flags and <laughs> uh, from the other side of the world. So, guys, we hope you've enjoyed. Andy, Adam, and Ian, it's great to catch up. I hope you've enjoyed too. And um, we'll catch you all again soon. Good. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.